movies are not they be they be movies are not an actual description of what you see of what is actually the story there you go all right so please don't go with them that's a very valid point ha huh. and i was talking that yakshas are basically a cousin of rakshasas but they are neutral they would only do bad they would cause harm to anyone that causes harm to them all right but according to all the mythologies a good being is which causes no harm to anyone no matter what so uh, i'm not going to say continue yeah good thank you basically a victim of anything yeah basically which is not a good thing cons- at which is all. at all at uh, devi go all right so yakshas uh, deskubera which we were talking about is basically the ki- uh, king of yakshas all right and ravan was the king of rakshasas he was not a asur all right so those they were actually told to be cousins in the mythology as well okay and our original topic here was we were talking how astronomy is related to mythology which we deviated from fairy so technically our original topic is anime and mythology not just anime or the fiction okay what i was okay let's talk about something that is good in hindu mythology and if you disagree you can just speak but not you know Question. dwell into it because it is no point okay. there are always loopholes in everything okay okay see this is how you should solve word piece so really exactly if everybody okay. if everybody just keeps on tat 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 then there, there is no solution to anything okay so now what is good in hindu mythology but taken turned bad now is hindu mythology originally was very accepting of all kinds of people all right there are literally mentions of gays and trans people a lot yeah and those as well i guess i'll come those? to that what do you mean those yeah chinese people as well i'll come to that okay all right hmm. here we are talking about gays and trans all right so basically mercury hmm so venus the planet venus okay uh Uh, Shukra. Uh, it's named Shukra in Hindu mythology, and it is known to be the son of the moon god and the wife of Jupiter. Uh, extra marital affair. Okay, confusing, but go on. Yeah, uh, the, these things happen. What? So the god Jupiter, right? Brahaspati. Hmm. He uh, kind of cursed. Uh, the Venus planet that you are not gonna belong to any religion, any gender. Basically, a trans. He was turned into a trans. Okay, and uh, there's a different story that there's a there was a person who was a king, and he kind of visited a forest in which uh, God Shiva was in. in this like he was there with goddess parvati they were doing stuff it's literally mentioned they were doing stuff all right so don't blame me uh, so the area was cursed okay like anyone that comes there would completely lose any gender they have some so but he was unaware so lord shiva kind of uh, gave him a you know kind of a semi free pass like for half the year you'll be a man for half the year you'll be a female the king was known as ila all right and this king and planet venus uh, fell in love and they had children and that clan is known as chandravansh so you could technically argue like like uh, what do you call it clownfish they they have this uh, what do you call it this biological yes that, they yeah, can turn change to, genders yes. after a certain something like that yeah. yes exactly something like that. so that thing that clan is known as chandravansh all right 
and uh, it is a very important clan because uh, Chandravansh and Suryavansh were both very uh, played a very major role in all of the mythology like in Ramayana alright uh, Lord Rama is from Chandravansh alright he and Lord Rama is not the first person famous from his uh, de- uh, descent actually uh, in in his you know line of fathers uh, his father Dashrath and his ancestor Ikshvaku Ikshvaku is the main guy all right sounds like an African name but okay names were very different in the ancient times we guess all right so uh, lord rama is also known as kayan of ikshvaku in a very famous book okay okay which basically means descendant of ikshvaku ikshvaku was a guy who was a mortal but he was strong enough to you know help the devtas in battle against asuras because at that time people could you know manifest powers. divine weapons not powers divine weapons using mantras all right and dashrath was also very very strong uh, and lord rama was born to him because he was such a uh, he had such a lineage and he had such a strong power set all right so it was not just a coincidence that that, that this ra- uh, you know random king has born the son uh, which is basically an avatar of vishnu he had some reasons he had a resume <laughs> all right he had a cv for that and the mahabharata all the you know kuru clan mm-hmm. the pandavas and the kauravas were all suryavanshi suryavanshi <laughs> yeah so that that is also you know kind of messed up because mata kunti kind of both sons from all the gods oh see oh Sorry, uh, 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 God you really know. need to control the tongue man. What? It's a compliment. It's, it's not. It's a godly word. No. Godly is already a compliment. No. I have serious doubts. I am doing this with the wrong person. This specific one with the wrong person. Super wrong person. Look, You're yeah. gonna get me banned from the world. Like, we're gonna get dead man. Look, I'm just saying. You don't know how serious people get about this stuff. Look, I'm just saying if a person got with all the female goddesses, I would call that by a man over as well. Yeah, different reasons though. He, she did not like, uh, she did not go into intercourse with them. Alright. Their essence was born as her child. That's kind of what you no. kind of describe no. again manifested not both alright okay. not the pregnancy pregnancy thing so she surrogated yeah she oh. surrogated good oh. yeah. so that was a thing with uh, Mata Kunti and also a very interesting story when the Mahabharata was being written in the writings alright the devtas were like we want to contribute to this epic lore all right yeah my uh, hindu mythology is very you know de- uh, what you call descriptive they even gave a description of when another event was being written so everything was pre-decided because huh so uh, and devtas uh, children were also like we want to contribute as well so uh the children of pandavas all right and especially abhimanyu abhiman uh, uh, most of you would be aware of abhimanyu because he is basically kind of the ve- most famous hero of mahabharata the warrior child who gave up his life while you know fighting the most uh, fearsome and most uh, skilled warriors of that time and he is the one whose lineage continued the empire of the Pandavas later on. So, Abhimanyu was actually an avatar of Lord Chandra's son. Alright. That, yeah, even God's children wanted to play a part. He was an avatar of Chandra's son. And the reason he died early and had such a glorious death was like, 
Lord Chandra and the mother of the this specific child were not you know ready to give up give their child up for this thing ki we are we are not we are not going to be having a separation from him and everything they were very in like putramo child love love for their child not that kind get get out of alabama in your head right i didn't even mention ah, it your face it huh so he, they put up conditions that we want our son back early on and also he should have a very memorable glory so that's why he died the death of a hero and that is why his lineage was you know uh, his wife rukmini bore janamje which was basically the descendant who ruled the throne of indraprasth and hastinapur so that thing happened anything else let's switch religions because i feel like we've uh, uh, deeply talked about hindu mythology which is fine cuz mm. you know like that's what we've cool, grown cool. up cool cool yeah which i have grown up you yeah. definitely have not considering your <coughs> lot of yeah But i'm just going to say like i'm just going to clarify for the viewers i did attend sunday school and i gave up within 2 weeks may no not 2 weeks uh 2 months i think yeah you you gave up pretty fast anyways he is baptized is, though huh. yeah by james bond and the person who baptized him the name of the guy is james bond you're not kidding james bond man that's cool all right anyways so, anyways anime no, anime no, anime no i have got to talk yes please konchu huh konchu konchu you want to talk? okay egyptian yeah one religion we haven't got in Okay. One mythology we haven't got into. Hmm. So, uh, anime don't doesn't go too much into Egyptian, to be honest. The God of War games sometimes. Games do anime and games are different, right? Huh. S- sometimes. Yeah, most. Of. Oh. Again, uh, and Marvel Universe does go into it because <laughs> Konchu, of oh, course, and Ubus, right? Very major part. Also, the uh, being that. Every god fought against in a you know unanimous collection was a being from Egyptian mythology. His uh, name was Anakin. Alright, he is a very famous pharaoh, and he kind of in the Marvel universe gained celestial powers and became so strong that all the pantheons had to you know uh, join as a collective in order to defeat him. So yeah, they gave Egyptian mythology a lot of uh, relevance. In anime, uh, Norse mythology is uh, kind of given a lot of relevance as well. And one thing I feel very bad about in regards to Norse mythology is it has, you know, uh, it is being used very differently in a lot of places. So people don't ever actually get to See know the accuracy. The accuracy. there is no accuracy scale there because every every iteration tells a different story not in the scripts of norse mythology in the references that it has all right the actual thing is that hela and uh, the world serpent are children of loki exactly all even right? fenrir right yeah even fenrir the wolf yeah. are children of loki and thor is not a, such a good golden goldy locks guy of course he is. i mean guy wields hammers and he does the thunder god stuff like sleep around a lot of course of course mm. he's, he's guy as fast as thunder he gets around yeah hmm. hammer time baby hmm. but uh, thor specifically is being given a lot of relevance in marvel obviously yeah he uh, came an avenger uh, and that is kind of the these they did to him yeah i'm just saying like in the mm. mainstream of marvel comics in like his latest comics he is so strong that with one blast from mjolnir he literally 
delisted uh, the being that was going to cause the termination of the multiverse. My man leveled up a lot. A lot. You need to read okay. Thor comics, man. He's leveled up a lot, and he has also become Thor Hulk recently. Thor Hulk. Yes. So not only is he strong enough to, you know, beat anything that can destroy a multiverse, the mm. multiverse, Marvel multiverse. He also has the power of the one above all. Yeah. So he's basically the god, god, like, like, like he, the god. He is the up there thing now. Like he, he could technically fight the Holy Trinity, uh, not the Holy Trinity, the. Uh, what do you call that thing? The guy with the three heads. Guy with it. Ha, ah, living tribunal? There we go, yeah, that one. Wow, man. The gold guy, two, ah, three heads. Sure. You could just say one above all, he could fight one above all, actually. No. Oh, he can? Kinda. Okay. Because it's like a thunder boosted and, you know, even more divine element of one above all, yeah, one above I'm, all. I'm just saying, like, he's fueled by that guy's power so technically he should a lot of times uh, people fueled by the power of the god have defeated the actual god in mythology so ah, okay. it's not just it's not just uh, what is the wheel it's who's behind the wheel yeah. <laughs> no Tokyo drift ten, ten, no copyright yeah <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, also they have got a bit more accurate as well like now Odin's soul actually resides inside me only as it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. So yeah things are getting better. For the mythology within For th- Yeah. Let's get back to anime because we have not talked about it at all. Attack on Titan? Any mythology ah, there? Yes. There is actually. So uh, Titans. Where else do you see a lot of relevance of Titans? In which mythology? I'm gonna guess Greek with giants? No, Norse with ice giants actually. And it's a more uh, defined uh, reference because uh, what is the name of the king of the ice giants? I've already forgotten. Yamir. Ah. Now you get the connection? Yeah. Yamir is the, you know, uh, uh, mentioned to be the slave who actually was the first titan and she um, created all the other titans, <laughs> basically. Going a little creative with the word created, kind of. You did read the manga, right? I saw the anime. It hasn't caught up that much. She yeah. created it, alright, out of things. I mean, she created it because the daughters were ha huh. no no she also her uh, she blood just, and everything yeah, she can't just power huh. anyone huh. with it huh. so her descendants and the people who have uh, her uh, blood inside her basically huh. her bloodline basically bloodline basically and people who ate her body that was kind of messed up but okay oh, <laughs> huh. kind of concerned with the but okay part at the end of that sentence that uh, it, it is, is what it up. is it is just messed up okay it is, so it is not there is no we can't do okay anything man. about it <laughs> other than that there are some more uh, examples of norse mythology in anime actually some good ones uh, the artwork in all of the endings and the paintings basically. in other anime oh okay huh. uh one is like some anime has straight out based on it like named ke uh, what do you call bleach bleach kind of base themselves on shinigamis yeah in japanese mythology okay we talk about no okay huh. so in uh, what do you call it uh, i can why what's the name yeah in saint seiya this en- entire arc that is ah not, that guy yeah it is basically based on the Norse pantheon right they want did one on greek as well saint seiya referenced a lot of pantheons all right also beyblade constellations pegasus and power everything. rangers hades pa- power rangers 
you say the way you're not missing you you could call it a religion they had a god the, the god gave humans avatars so you could power them and then defeat people who were that causing was trouble uh, original created being all right uh, is it all of it's not created all right uh, and uh, netflix anime known as blood of zeus pretty cool uh, have you watched it no i have it's pretty cool all uh, of course obviously named it's on it's in the name already yeah it's greek mythology zeus uh, right. yeah. and he shows up in it of course hopefully he would he does yeah hmm. now let's and all are gone is a good mention hmm this is about uh, hindu ones oh ha huh. So in Noragami one of the most famous powers and this power is used abundantly abundantly is the thousand hands of buddha ah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, not yeah. from buddhism it's from hinduism okay. the hindu buddha all right yeah, yeah. Hmm. so that th- that thing is also a part of naruto hashirama special move I again I just remembered another mythology we have in touch and uh-huh. is probably mentioned in a few anime I hope uh-huh. uh, the monkey god Oh Chinese mythology Yeah like I know m- some people might get it confused with Hanumana but Ah ah let's 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 go there yeah. Ha huh. so Chinese mythology basically Wu Kong and stuff stuff Yeah so Goku was literally based on him a journey from the west All right, Wu Sun, Wu Kong, Sun Goku, same thing. Okay, and uh, I find it when I read the, you know, the uh, what do you call it, uh, the ending phases of Hanumana's journey and the starting phases of Wu Kong's journey. It, it it connects. It connects so much. Like the timeline matches. because in the end after lord rama gave his life in the uh, samudra uh, hanumana went to himalayas and he was like i'm going just going to be peace out yeah. right and then he had kind of turned into a rock in meditation ha huh. wayne johnson yeah, sure but okay <laughs> and uh, wu kong story picked up from there from that location from that you know uh, aesthetic kind of oh. that there was a uh, divine monkey who was in uh, uh, in penance they did not say as a pilgrim they said he, he was a, it was a curse or something he was a rock and then basically a pilgrim came and you know released him from his curse okay. same powers of course right wu kong and him have same powers So and both are known as monkey king in their own rights. Right, both hail from the Himalayas. Also, a uh, human history connection I'd like to make here, which would sound very stupid, but I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> right, because why not? Uh, we have already talked so much uh, uh, stuff that can be pointed out. <laughs> so why not? So. Uh, in uh, human history a uh, real thing were neanderthals all right a uh, uh, different uh, branch of humans yeah right? it was this previous gen not previous actually homo sapiens erectus and homo neanderthals uh, they did exist at the same point of time as well for some time all right and they had emerged from different ancestry okay it's just that homo sapiens was smarter of course sapiens sapiens was smarter because sapien literally means wise okay okay they uh, eradicated neanderthals because they're wise yeah because they're wise and life is a competition and all that stuff life is a race yeah they literally invaded their location and they were like humko khane ki kami ho rahi hai we're gonna kill these people <laughs> and they did anyways the point is that uh, neanderthal uh, skulls are also find in, found in the indian subcontinent In history in general hmm. and uh, in ramayana they never said bandar ya monkey to they would not say because it's hindi but bandar ya any you know uh, synonym of that they said vanar now what does vanar mean vanar means basically 
someone who resides in the one what what is the one one means forest ah that means a forest dweller it does not mean a monkey and neanderthals always resided in the forests like tarzan and mogli they were not neanderthals okay so and if you see the description of vanas in the ramayana their physiology absolutely accurately matches that of neanderthals right the stature the physical features the you know differentiator from humans and monkeys the centralized posture they were perfect neanderthals all right so my theory is that those were actually neanderthals so yeah hanumana was a neanderthal who come was a neanderthal the, the last generation of neanderthals the last accepted generation of neanderthals all right and they were they were very strong as well. of course they were but their strength was only shown supernatural when another human strength was shown supernatural otherwise they were just like they are stronger than normal humans considerably strong which even gorillas are all right so that thing and coming back to chinese mythology chinese mythology is more referred to in chinese animes yeah like manhwa and stuff manhwa is korean oh huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah what do you call chinese manhu or something i <laughs> i am not sure okay but there are some very good animations in chinese mythology and they mention wukong and all a lot neza is a god that is mentioned a lot in different anime and he is from chinese mythology ah okay all right uh, so that thing also chinese mythology and japanese mythology basically adapted buddha a lot especially chinese buddha is one of the most uh, major figures in chinese mythology so yeah then uh, coming back to the references of hindu mythology in one piece all right uh, there are many names given to many characters and uh, if you see the description of some like sanji if you are aware of sanji his dad all oh right yeah. hmm Sa- sanji oh yeah, is a guy a, oh yeah i forgot what the he you have not watched one piece. nami namu Nami and Robin are females. There we go. Sanji is a guy. Zoro is a guy. And Luffy is a guy. All right. Yeah, Usopp is a guy. Luffy, Luffy can. No. Ah, okay. I mean, I'm just saying, stretch it, stretch it, stretch the f- form into. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the references okay. to. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, the father of Wind Smoke Sanji is also known as Jarma, which translates to Garuda in Hindi. sama and garuda is a very prominent god in japanese mythology uh, which is taken from hindu mythology and it spread around the world somehow if you actually you know notice there ha- must have been uh, unmentioned pilgrims from the hindu cult because thailand what do you see when you literally exit the airport you see a huge replica which uh, summarizes the samudra mant event that is the figure in that is presented there their major god is garuda and their one of the most famous islands also a very famous holiday location bali is named after bali from ramayana so yeah I have a question. Yes, uh, please. Does the anime a Kamiga Kill reference yeah. any mythologies? It does. It does. It does. It does. Like there is S Death, and then there is that character who uh, can, you know, has the power to transform a little bit into a beast. I don't remember the names. I'm sorry, guys. Mm-hmm. Your favorite high school DXD mentions a lot of mythologies. Of Lu- uh, I think the Christian version, like Lucifer. Hmm. He, he, like it men- mentions multiple pipes. Actually, yeah, actually. yeah. Because in the latest, in the last season, there, there was a lot of. I think it was Greek. Yeah. Yeah. 
also there are some more anime that mention multiple and, uh, yeah even in i think even in one of the seasons of high school days they even mentioned egyptian ones as well hmm saint say uh, and then this uh, high school dxd and there's this anime known as da- dan machi Yes. Uh, right. So, Dan Machi basically has all the pantheons in it, and one of the most famous characters is Ganesha. And we have talked about Ganesha enough to let all of you know what and who is Ganesha. All right. And apart from that, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho. What? Oh uh, yeah, that thing. It's a classic. That's where the spirit gun originated. Yeah, Yu Yu Hakusho. Huh? Has uh, Enma in it. Even One Piece has Enma in it. And do you know what Enma is? A god. Yes. Shinigamis are death gods. All right. But who is the king of Shinigamis? The king of Shinigamis is known as Enma in uh-huh. Japanese mythology. So that thing is taken from there. All right. And chakra is basically a Hindu concept. All right, and in Berserk, Rakshasas are mentioned as a spirit, yeah. which is obvious reference to Hindu mythology. Also, there is fate, uh, fate series, fate series in which a lot of mythologies are mentioned. I mean, the the like it ran for a long time. I don't want to go back. I don't even want to, you know, revisit it. I just. No, that one of the characters was named Karna from Mahabharat. Ah, okay. I'm because just saying, like, because it stands out because the studio that animated Fate, mm. it, it's got its reputation because of because it animated Fate so well. Yeah. Can you guess which one it is. It's you. It's you four to be. Nice. Is the same one that's doing Demon Slayer right now. Ah, nice. Yeah. Now, uh, even uh, Twin Star Exorcist mentions mythology so, say, a no, lot. Ah, see, the mantras are actually you know names of gods and calling them. I even heard Garuda there sometimes. Yeah. Hmm. Corruption is a real thing in that anime. Yeah. Oh, and of course, now it's mythology. There's a literal <laughs> anime based on that, known as Record of Ragnarok. But later on, in order to extend it, a lot of pantheons got included. Ragnarok is basically a destruction of the world in Norse mythology. Okay, and there is a little anime known as Kamigami no Asubi turns mythology into a shoujo romance. Why not anime? Why not? Which is totally uh, expected from anime. Turn everything into a shonen romance. The best romance with mythology. Is undoubtedly, undoubtedly, the world God only knows. Ah, because it starts off with the main character already thinking he's a god, and then we find out that they are real gods, and and you know, most mostly goddesses, <laughs> and it really, like it expands, but it's mo- it starts out as etchy romance, harem, and then it it just evolves from there. But better, like you know, like like what Food Wars was trying to do. Uh huh. But God of, uh, you know, like the world God only knows succeeded, because Food yeah. Wars kind of failed after yeah. they it, it involved powers for uh, no reason. That was that was you know kind of such a drag because it was not required. Yeah, no. The reason the, the reason given is because the what do you call it? The actual chef that you know used to make these hmm. recipes. She she was pregnant at that time and therefore unavailable. So wow. the author had to do something because of deadlines. Mm-hmm. So you know what every other author does. <laughs> If they don't have a proper way of putting it across, ah yes, uh, powers abilities uh, out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, one of the best uh, references uh, to Christianity mm-hmm. in anime would be. Devil Man Cry Baby. Ah, right. I I mean I'm not gonna say much on it, but oh, 
<laughs> Basically, it sums it up pretty nicely that Christianity is very creepy, evil. If you really look at it from another perspective, and Devil Man Cry Baby succeeds at that. Even though you know, it shows that Lucifer is trying to battle God in an evil, just way. Mm. and uh, god is god kind of like the way he punishes satan or lucifer is by literally ending the universe again and again yeah. so who's the real villain in that <laughs> yeah it it happens in a lot of anime uh one recent one i this i watched it recently but i cannot remember the name like it had all the angelic beings in it and everything and the little point of it was that we need a replacement for god because the current one is has stopped functioning properly that was that was kind of a very hard pun <laughs> and uh, bleach you were mentioning be- bleach sometime back so all the you know uh, call out in that like uh, zen pacto and everything they are all basically words from Japanese mythology. Right, they are Japanese mythology has a lot of mantras. So there are mantras from Japanese mythology. Of course. Because a mantra basically is calling out to the power of a god. You no, know, you uh, ask the god to you know give you some power that is pleasing the gods. One such thing. So that was some good reference. Dragon Ball tried to do that initially, but they decided not to. For them. Yeah, I mean, martial arts is a much better realistic, entertaining way for an anime to they go. They created their own. Yeah. yeah. Martial arts mixed with a lot of chi and stuff. Yeah. Aliens, chi, martial arts. Yeah. I think. So, in the end, let's let's conclude it now. Yeah. This is gonna be a two-part. <laughs> so, as a conclusion, we would like to say that mythology in any pantheon should not be taken literally. All right, no, no god or no mythological script ever says that I am a you know patthar ki lakir kind of thing. It's always it had always been written to you know give an example. You know, give a kind of a story to implement stuff. Guideline. Guidelines that were in accordance with the requirements of that era, mythology and beliefs, and you know, uh, whatever structure we follow in our life should always change with the era. And you know, now so even faster because with technology, everything is uh, advancing at a faster pace. So even we should. Yeah, we should always, uh, you know, have belief and hope in in, in ourselves. A god, as a no, I am not saying in a god if we wish to, but we should not be the you know being that is like, मेरे भगवान को ये कर दिया. Yeah, le- basically, no, no, you know, material manifestation. Basically, you know. Let God power you, not the other way around. Your, your hope and basically your will is basically what is the essence of God. All right, they were created to give guidelines and hopes. They yeah. were not created to destroy. It. So that is the entire point. Believe in yourself and your spirit. That will give you positivity. Do the job you're supposed to do. Stick to. Even if it is just lazing around, sometimes it is just lazing around, and that is completely fine. I mean, you know, like a lot of the purpose of our audience is to subscribe, like, and share our videos. I'm the, I'm the, 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 these are the words of uh, my God, which is me. So just, just empowering. Mm-hmm. Anyways, guys. All right then, we shall conclude. Peace out for the season. Peace out. Sayonara.